Okay, so now we're ready to code something actually substantial, something that really does something. So anyways, this function here, I'm going to run this function first, and then I'm going to explain it line by line what I'm doing. Okay, so up here I'm going to use a... Well, first I can do this check selection. This will check only my selection, not my whole file, because I'm using a lot of notes, a lot of uh, just test functions here. So I only want to check this little part of the code. It's okay. So I'm going to do next is check it again, or double click it, select it again, rather. I'm going to use this instead of this, because I only want to load my selection. I don't want to load my code down here, which I'm going to get to later in this tutorial series. Okay, so let's load that. My command name is L-E-N-C. So let's see how well this works. So these functions always work perfectly when I'm not recording. So the first thing my function does is it asks me for a new length for my line. So I'm going to plug that in as a, let's do 25. So notice I have to plug in the length each time, and there's a, maybe if I go far enough in this tutorial series, I'll um, I'll show you a way to make that much much uh, more more fluent to work with. In that, I mean how to uh, how to store an autolist variable and not have to type in your uh, that number each and every time. So let's do that length command again. Twenty five. Oops. So I just put that circle there. Let's make that one 10. Just to, to show that it's actually lengthening that line from the center point. So you can see these grips are right on the on the center. That's why they I can move them together as a unit. Anyway, so you get the point there. My my function is doing what I intended. So, anyways, here's how the code works. My Define function function. So first I get the new length. I get a real number for that. And that's the first line you see when I'm entering that uh let's make that 50. Now let's uh, use this line of code to select the line. So with this, I have some provisions in the code for when when I click that. It activates this part of the code. I'll show you what I mean here. So let's run that link command again. Let's do 100. So if I select a circle or something that's not a not a line, it asks me for for a line object again, and it'll keep asking me until I select, select the line. But one flaw with this code is that if I click click a point without an object. Then it just kicks me out of the code, unfortunately. So that's something I'll fix, but not not in this lesson. So how that works is, so I have my let's select our line just once more, just so I make sure I have a line object selected. Let's make our entity entity list. So as you can see, there's a, a code zero. And that corresponds to the object type, which is a line. So let's use this little command here. So the asoc association command, asoc zero, and then my, my entity list, it'll shoot out specific information about my uh, my object via the entity list, right? So asoc8, my entity list, is zero for layer zero. So let's make that a little bit easier. I'm gonna change that to a-anno. Let's uh, reselect our line. There we go.
Okay, so we have uh, code eight the dot in the dotted pair format with our layer name. So what if we only want our layer name? There's a few things you can uh, there's a few ways you can get it. You can use the CDR function, and if you're wondering what what how that works, let's do a let's make a quick list. So my intention with this lesson is not not really to show you how to use lists, but just to maybe just a little bit just to get you get you started. But there's much better tutorials on the internet regarding uh, how to manipulate lists. So I think this will do the same thing I just did. That quotation mark acts as the list in this case. But anyways, just to make the code easier to read. I usually don't do that. I'm just going to put list here. So anyways, we have our color list. You can always figure out that by using the inspect. So let's try a few functions on this. Car color list. So that returns the first element. Let's see what that does. Okay, that didn't work. To be honest, I didn't think it would work. I was just trying it out. So CDR, let's see what that does. Okay, so CDR returns every element, <coughs> excuse me, every element in the list except the first element. Let's see what that does. Okay, so CDDR returns every element in the list except the first two elements. So let's see what CDDR returns. And that returns the last element. There's one more thing we can use, catter. Let's see what that does. So that returns the second element in the list. Let's see what... That returns the third element, and you can probably guess what this is going to do. Let's see how many Ds we can add to that. Oh, that's that's the max amount. You can see the, the color of the the function changes, meaning it's no longer a see if that works just out of curiosity. Okay, it doesn't work. Anyways, I hope you those if you ever see these CDR, or these CAT R, or these CAR, they're very old commands. That's why they don't really make uh, make sense. So if those you find those con confusing, use the nth command. Which is kind of hard to say that, isn't it? Let's see what nth zero returns. So when you're dealing with lists, think of the zero as the first ent entry. One is actually the second, two is the third, and so on. So there's a slot for zero, there's a slot for one, there's a slot for two. Think of it that way. So if I do nth one color list, so as you can see that using this command, this function, it makes it much more clear what you're actually doing with the list. Whereas you're using like a like catter, for example, that's not very intuitive. But the reason the CDR command is good is, is in case you want to return like the end of the list. And that comes in, that becomes uh, very important later on. Because remember, we're going to de be dealing with point lists. So test list. Let's make a like a fake point list. 10.25, 0, 0.3, 0.0. Let's, let's pretend this is our point. But let's make it a in DXF format, right? Because we have to put a 10 or 11 in front of it. 
So let's put a 11 here. So let's let's pretend this is our, our new endpoint. So that's in the format. We have the, the DXF code and then the point entries. So yeah, so that that nth command works great if you only want to retrieve one entry from the from your list. But sometimes you do need to use these uh, these funky like cat r cdr car commands because a cdr command returns everything but the first entry and that makes it very useful for dxf codes. So let's um let's show you this example right here, right? So now we can uh, we can access just the name of the layer. We don't we don't get any anything else with it, right? We don't get the the eight per se. So anyways, let's let's get get rid of this clutter. So all this code right here is doing is it's just checking my node my code. It's looking at the entity list, making sure the type object type is aligned. Then I'm using the program because the if command is only expecting one function here. So to use multiple functions in an if statement, either the if or the or else part, I need to use this program wrap, wrapper is what they usually call it. So anyways, here I have the while function. I'm checking the same thing that I did in the if statement. So this will loop until my entity equals a line. And you saw the code crash when I selected a point and, and didn't have anything. So this has to have something to check, unfortunately. There are ways to code around this, but I won't have time to get into that in this lesson. So I'm just making this routine basically to teach you the difference between regular Lisp and auto Lisp. So that would uh, be quite the tangent to go on, but it's not not by any means advanced code. Once you get through this lesson, that, that code will be a, be a snap for you. Okay, so anyways, we have our while. And then we just do this over again. We just repeat these steps that, that I have up here, right? So anyways, hopefully all said and done, we have our line object, and, and it is a line, of course. So then we start performing functions on it. First, I get the, the line angle, and you can see how I'm getting, uh, getting this. I'm using the angle function, and then I'm grabbing the two points from my entity list. There, there's the endpoint of that particular line. So anyways, I'm getting getting the line length. I'm using the distance function. Same thing. Now I'm getting the center point. I'm using something called the polar function. The polar function polar, and I believe that goes by point, angle, and then distance. And what the polar function does is it returns a new point for you using those parameters. So what I'm doing is I'm using the polar function, I'm using my start point, the line's angle, and then I'm timesing the line's length by 0 0.5, and that's giving me the center of the line. So now I'm making the new start point. One important thing is that the polar function actually outputs radians, that's why I got pi here. So I'm using the polar function, I'm using the center point, I'm using the user line angle variable that I created, and I'm adding pi to it. And that would be the same if I'm dealing with degrees instead of radians. Adding pi is equivalent to adding 180 degrees. So I'm fli flipping my direction around. I'm going from the center back to where the new start point will be. And of course, I'm using 0 0.5 of my new length to get that start point. So hopefully that made sense. If, if it doesn't... Um, Maybe I'll post this code and you can study it. My goal is not so much to have you understand this code through me talking, but rather give you a really good picture of the difference between uh, Autolisp and Visual Lisp. Hopefully I don't sound like a, like a broken record there. Okay, the new endpoint is a bit simpler because I don't have to add pi. I just use the, the line's angle and I find my new endpoint using the, the new line length. And if you're a bit lost where I got this variable, I collect it at the start of my routine. Remember, I uh, I have that prompt to specify the new length for the line. So I'll run this command right after I'm done explaining it. Okay, and uh, 
let's see if these work. Hopefully I did everything right. So I'm just going to throw these in here just to, just to get all my variables filled up. So I got a little trick I can show you how to make sure all your points are ending up in the right place. So I got a few notes written here. So a convenient way to check that your points are in the right place is that you can uh, run the circle command and just create a little circle. There we go. Okay, so let's see what that did. Okay, so here's the line we're working with right now. And these are actually the new, these will be the new start and end points. The start points would be whichever end I drew the line from. So if I drew the line from here to here, this is a start point and uh, vice versa. But basically those circles, I know they're in the right place. I already rehearsed that before making the video. Okay, so we have all our all our points, all our new uh, parameters to work with. So now we're going to use something called the substitute function. We got to substitute the new item with the old item and plant it into our list, just like I did in the first lesson, I believe, the first or second lesson. I can't remember. Anyways, let's uh, let's throw, throw those in there. I'll explain this one more time, of course. There, so. No errors were thrown, so everything got planted into our object list. And here's something important here. So whenever I'm doing this function, I always, especially if you're bouncing between Visual Lisp and regular Auto Lisp, with Auto Lisp you have to update your entity. Because when I run this, I'm returning this list, and it looks like what I want. My point's going to be updated, but I'm not saving it to anything. So I got to make sure I, I have this set queue, and I update my my entity list. I do that just by overwriting the variable, right? You can see that I'm using using the list as argument in the in the substitute function, but I'm also updating that very same variable name. So I'm just overwriting it essentially, right? Just doing like a save as. So anyways, we're doing a substitute, the new item, and this function will find what to replace based on the old item that we specify. And then it's going to update this list. So it's going to search this list for this. And it's going to update it with this. Now that'll probably be exactly the same because we already updated it, right? So that that's um, doing my start point, my end point. And then one final thing you have to do with this is you have to use the ent mod function to update the da database. There we go. So our, note, our line is now uh, at the correct length, and it lengthened from the center. So I'll just do that a few more times. Let's do uh, 33. OK, so coming up next, I'm going to do that exact same function, but I'm going to use a uh, Visual Lisp. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching up to this point.